Oh, hello again, YouTube land. Um, sorry for my appearance. I'm getting ready to do my afternoon workout. But it occurred to me it's been a while since last posting, and the longer I go between them, the more I tend to have to say, and then it takes forever to listen to. So, uh, in the interest of brevity, if nothing else, um, it is Arctic in the northeast, to say the least. Uh, today I think the high is somewhere around 20 uh, with wind chills over the course of the early morning and late evening taking us into the feels like of negative numbers. Um, as has been my opinion in the past and continues to be my opinion uh, by today's outing demonstrably, I don't mind the very low temperatures. I don't. I mean, I'm asthmatic and I'm anemic, which means that I run the risk of both breathing and cardiac issues and severe cold, but the temperature itself doesn't really bother me. It's the wind. Now, if the wind is the same temperature or a little warmer than the temperature it is outside, eh, not so bad. Not pleasant, because cold wind is never fun, but not so bad. But when you have arctic sub-zero temperatures with what the wind chill is or what the wind chill will cause it to feel like. Eek. So I didn't really go anywhere yesterday. And I didn't really go anywhere today. And today, when I did go out, I made the mistake of walking several blocks from home, which was just long enough for the wind to kick up. But I got back and stopped at the market, which I needed to do regardless. And when I came back into the building, lo and behold, my luck, the elevator is out of service. There's a technician standing there with the panel open, and I said, oh, is it at all possible I can go up? And he said, not really, it's not in service, and I went, mm. But I'm holding grocery bags, you know, with my hat and coat and all that on, just come in from the very, very cold outside. And the technician looks at me and he goes, what floor are you on? And I went, the top. And he literally made this face. And as I reach for the door to the stairwell entrance, he says, eh, come on, come on, come on. Well, the door's open. Let's just quick. And I went, are you, are you, and he goes, you know, so I go in and he lets me go all the way up. He takes the elevator up to my floor. I had this relative smile on my face and I was like, thank you so much. He goes, yeah, don't worry about it. Have a nice day. I was like, thank you too, you know. So I got very lucky uh, that they were nice enough to let me take the elevator up. That's happened to me once before. Probably the same company, but a different technician. They were very pleasant. The other guy was curious why, and I explained to him I have arthritis in my knees, and it's it's difficult. So that's why he let me. But this guy just said, nah, it's all right. I'm just, um, I'm right here. Go ahead. So I'm not blonde anymore, but when I talk to people who aren't, you know, people who know me and know what kind of bitch I am and can be. People who don't know me tend to take on this initial impression of, oh, well, you know, pretty little girl. She's got that sweet little face and her voice is very polite and she's got good manners. Well, yeah, because manners don't cost anything. I grew up in a house with an etiquette tyrant. You know, if, if Miss Manners had bred with Hitler, I think that's what my mother would have been. That, or Mussolini, I don't know, something tyrannical. And my grandmother, being a school teacher from New York in the 40s and 50s, to start off with, etiquette isn't something I was ever allowed to get away from. So I have to sound polite and I have to act polite. That's why customer service is the primary facet of my skill set in conjunction with office work and problem resolution, problem conflict resolution. I like when people have serious problems that they want someone else to fix. It's a complicated set of reasons, but I'm good at it. Let's just leave it at that, okay? <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, I had an observation a couple weeks ago when I was seeing the doctor about getting the uh, meds for my sinusitis. And I mentioned to her that I like having the very brief and limited conversations I end up having opportunity to have 
with my brother-in-law's, I don't know if she's his girlfriend, common-law wife, I don't know what they are, but his other half. Um, she's in her third year of med school, and I've mentioned her before, she's a very, very nice person, incredibly tall though, like craning my neck to look her in the eye tall, um, which really just makes me jealous because I've always felt short at 5'6". So. Um, but she's in her third year of med school, and the conversations I have with her, I was telling my doctor, you know, I said to her, okay, here's where it gets convoluted. I told my doctor that what I've told Hana is you'll always get along with patients, in my perspective, if you go in, not as a doctor, but if you go in as a person with medical knowledge. <clears throat> Excuse me. And my doctor was very impressed with that insight. She said, that's a wonderful distinction. And it's true, because a lot of people believe their own hype. And it doesn't matter what field you're in. If you're in a field where you make a name for yourself, you believe your own hype. You could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be a journalist, you could be a PR you know, person, it won't matter. If your title becomes your opening salvo, your, your de facto definition of self, then unequivocally, you believe your own hype. By making that your introduction to everyone and everything, you believe your own hype, which is a load of bunk. Because if you're worth your salt at what you do, you don't need to introduce yourself as that thing. You need to introduce yourself as you. And that's my opinion for all professions. Which is why I've gotten along with so few people I've actually ever legitimately met who've already made a name for themselves. You know? Um, there have been reporters I've met, only a couple of whom I could seriously understand as being relatable in real life. I've met a couple different actors, many different musicians, a couple different comedians, and the only people I'm ever able to relate to well are the people who are people that do well at their chosen career, not the thing named so-and-so, you know? So that was my other significant observation. I need to get to my workout. <laughs> So I'm done before I have to cook dinner. You know, I've got this ponytail up near the top of my head here. And the tail of it is still brushing on my neck. I find it so difficult to accept that my hair has gotten this long. I, the last time my hair was this long, I mean, it hasn't been long in 16 years. And by long, I mean like past ear level. But it hasn't been this long since I was... Dear God, I would have been in... I was 12? 10. Upwards of 20 years. Yeah. Oh my God. And the fact that I can say it's been 20 years, and 20 years ago I was old enough to remember, oh my God, I feel old. Okay, I need to stop talking now. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm going to start on a whole other roller coaster if I don't want to go there. So, I'm going to go do my workout, make dinner, and enjoy one of the fresh-baked oatmeal cookies I just made from scratch. Because like all home cooks, I take a basic recipe, and then I kind of futz, fiddle, finagle with it, and make it my own. So, I'm going to go enjoy one of those after... I get this workout done because, you know, you got to motivate yourself with something. And I will talk to you all next time. Okay? Stay warm. <laughs>